the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, Seat of Wisdom, Saint Joseph, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the first reading, we hear Peter and John reminding the the well the, the day before yesterday they told him that we were they had could only obey God, not man. They're, they had a higher authority that they had to follow in preaching the gospel. And then when the Pharisees today in the gospel, Gamaliel gave them this rule of thumb. Well, if it's from God, there's nothing we can do that's going to prevent it. If it's from man, it's going to die, just because that's the way of all things that are from men. They do not persevere. They will not. But if it's God, it will always overcome and continue and of course, that has been the church throughout the ages, that the church has overcome all of its obstacles, both from within and without, both those who tried to stamp out the church from without by persecution, fire, and sword, and from those within, the heresies, the scandals, whatever it may be that from within that have tried to destroy the church. You know, even that saying that is either attributed to the bishop, Archbishop of Paris or to the Pope at the time when Napoleon threatened that he would destroy the church unless they gave in to his demands. He said that the, the bishop or the Pope, who, whichever prelate it was, said, well, what makes you think that you can destroy the church? We've been trying for the last 2,000 years. And so even today we can see that, you know, it seems that there are some prelates <laughs> and priests who are still trying to, through their own connivings, through not listening to the Holy Spirit, but following a different spirit, have an agenda which ultimately is wanting to destroy the church. They will not succeed either. Because Christ is ultimately, he is the head of the church. He is, this is not a human organization that was established. Uh, it was, it's a divine institution. And it will be with us till the end of time. And our Lord, of course, has given us that guarantee. And we can take that to the bank, you might say. That's the only solid promise that we have that one of the one of them that our Lord has made to those who are faithful to him and then to his church our Lord will never abandon his church this is an indissoluble bond that exists between Christ and his church and we have as a sign of his perpetual you might say gift to the church the Holy Eucharist that he will uh, be with us in his Eucharistic presence till the end of time. And of course, he is the same in the Eucharist as he is in heaven. So we were just going to like the uh, men on the road to Emmaus, our Lord's going to let the veil drop and we will see him as he is. But the Eucharistic miracles that he performs today are also guarantees that he has given to us of his promise and of his of showing us that what he said this is my body and this is my blood is true and he prefigured that in the in, during his public ministry by working great miracles of feeding a large crowd of people with 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 such little as he did here in the gospel today. If our Lord can multiply the quantity of food, the substance, if he can make the substance grow, 
and feed thousands of people, well, then he can also change the substance from bread and wine into his body, blood, soul, and divinity. That he is to be the life of the world. The church is to be here for the sake of all mankind. And that our Lord has given us his promise and has stood by the church through thick and thin, through hell and high water, you might say, and has not abandoned it. So today, as we recall the miraculous multiplication of the loaves and fishes, and our Lord and his faithfulness to his church throughout the ages, that we have this assurance that he is with us and that we must do as the apostles did, as it says that passage in the first reading, after they were flogged and threatened again, that they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ who is Jesus. That should be our task even now. What should we do? What should we do? You know, if as if Chicken Little said the sky is falling. Well, if the sky is falling, we should be doing what we should be doing even if the sky was not falling. And that is proclaiming the truth that Jesus is the Christ. Because if the sky is falling, you're going to meet him pretty soon. So what, either way, you don't have to worry about it. Just do what you're called to do. And that is our task in every age is to live our faith and be faithful to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.